You have been convicted of a crime you did not want to commit. A crime of the highest degree. You have been exiled from your brethren and left to rot with the lowest of the low. In this place, there is no redemption. You are the base denominator of all, only to be taken from your cell in the most extreme of circumstances. You have no friends, no family. This is your prison. This is your home. This is your fate. Welcome to Dice Jail. All met up, back together, and shared information about what's going on. Remy left to take a poop, and now we continue to explore. And we ran into a scorpion that almost killed Karak, and then we had a tasty snack, and then carried on, found a secret door, and led us to a bunch of bones that came together as a skeleton that was. That is, that is a very accurate recap, and uh, we're we're jumping right in, uh, jumping right into this, as the uh, skeleton here has, it, it's in the final stages of assembling itself, as this hulking, minotaur-like creature wielding a glaive. Um, so yeah, everyone, go ahead and roll initiative. Oh. Boy, uh, we didn't do any healing past uh, my little spurt, did we? You did not. No, because I treated your wounds, so I couldn't do it again. No, well, that was battle medicine, so you could have done treat wounds. Oh, but... oh, I bet. I thought. It oh wait, was... so Don't wait, did I get healed? Our failures. Uh, <laughs> am I still at thirteen HP? I haven't played. You long. are Karak. You are at the correct hit points. Okay. Yeah, because you got battle medicine during the last combat after you got knocked out. Right. Gotcha. Um, Oh, yes, 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 I remember now. All right, so we start with Karak. I will remind you that the bones have not yet fully assembled. They are in the process of pulling themselves together. You think it'll take another few seconds to fully pull themselves together. There's something I kind of want to try, but I don't know. I, I'm i tempted to cast Dispel Magic, but I don't know if this thing mm. is magic. If it's like being animated. Uh, let's see. Let me look at Dispel Magic. Um, hmm. One spell effect or unattended item... I would say, if you'd like to, you could try. Yeah, I get, I get the feeling this thing's like a full-on creature. Though, so. Okay, uh, in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and cast. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh. Disrupt undead. All right, and that is a save that the creature has to make. Yes. All right. So, and it's fortitude, I believe. Yep. Uh, that save is a twenty-three. Um, meaning that it does yeah. succeed. Uh, yeah, meaning that it does succeed, so it takes half damage. Okay. Um, and that is that rounded down? Uh, yes. So that is four points of damage. Four of points a positive of damage. Positive damage. Okay. You see, uh, you you cast the spell. The bones already are beginning to crack slightly from your magic. Ooh, all right. Uh, and then with my final action, um, does that count as an attack? Uh, no. All right, then I'm going to whip it. All right, go ahead and roll to hit. 26. 26. That does, in fact, hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Four. Four points of what kind of damage? Uh, slashing. Slashing. All right. You just... Your whip bounces right off the bone. No damage. Uh Oh. That brings us now to Nyx. I'm going to try exploiting vulnerabilities first off. All right. Go ahead and make that esoteric lore check. That is not so great. That is... Wait, let me check. I think it went up because still think it's very. It's a twelve. A twelve. Yeah, you. You're having a difficult time discerning anything about this. That is a failure. Okay. So I'm trying to remember. I... Um, exploit vulnerability. Uh, failure. Uh, so you can still do personal antithesis on a failure. Take it. All right. Try to attack. All right. Go ahead and roll the hit. That is a 26. 26. That does, in fact, hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Eleven points of damage. Eleven points of what kind of damage? Uh, slashing. Slashing. All right. Your blade definitely makes a dent, um, but it seems as though the damage has been reduced. Okay. Uh, And I believe you have one action remaining. Yes. Can I try to take one of the large bones that have not (laughs) joined up with his body and just hold it? Um, Sure. I'll call that a... I'll call that a grapple, I guess. Um, yeah, so I guess make a make an athletics check. Okay. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay, yeah, you managed to grab onto this bone, and as like there, it's like the there are magic strings, like these glowing blue threads that are trying to wrench these bones together and act as like muscle um and you're just holding on tight uh (laughs) so um you currently have uh yeah you currently have one of its uh you currently have one of its femurs cool Uh, cool, cool. so it's not going to be able to walk for the one round that it has grabbed I'll take it. Alright. That brings us now to the creature, uh, which is not done fully assembling itself. Uh, So, I would say the one thing it is going to attempt to do is escape that grapple. Um, So, what is your athletics DC? Okay, that's... Is that just 10 plus my athletics? Yes. 18. 18? The bone gets... 22 and escapes your grapple. Alright. 
That brings us to Petra. Okay. Um, I would like to start by tum. Well, I can't move because the game's paused. Oh, my bad. Uh, I would like to try and tumble through. All right, go ahead and make that acrobatics check. That is a 12. A 12. You do not succeed and are stopped short as one of, as the bone like wrenches itself from Nyx's grasp. You go to roll through and it just whoop, flies <laughs> straight past you and stopping you in your tracks. Sorry. Um, okay, then next I would love to cast Disrupt Undead. All right. That is a 17. I th that passes, so it takes half, yes? Yes, that is correct. Okay. It takes half of 1d6. Nope, 2d6. 2d6 plus half 2. 2d6. Yes, it is heightened. Whatever it says at the bottom where it says damage, there's a damage button. That's what the answer is. Ah, um, okay. So that is a four points of damage. Four points of damage. And that is including you halved it already. That's been halved. All right, then. Yeah, before this thing, like, as this thing fully assembles itself, it's already got this disruption energy from two sources attempting to tear it right back apart. All right. That brings us now to the top of round two with Karak, as this thing is now fully assembled. Do I not still have an action? Disrupt Undead is two actions. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. Why? Did, <laughs> why do I always think it's one action? Okay. Rock. All right. Well. Uh, yeah. I mean. How much? Oh. Oh, this is infinite. Oh. Mm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna disrupt undead. Well, actually, hang on. Let me check this. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna cast disrupt. All right, then. That is a 25 to save. Yeah, it saves. All right, half damage. Oh. Uh, six points of positive Six points of positive damage. Would have damage. been 13 otherwise. <laughs> All right. Uh, you have one action remaining. Uh, let's see. I'm going to peck it with my beak. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> 12. 12, that unfortunately does not hit. All right, then. Squawk. That brings us now to Nyx. I'm going to try to exploit vulnerabilities again. All right. Oh, that's a natural 20. Natural 20. Oh, yeah, that would be a critical success right there. So you rack your brain and your pigeon just beams the information directly into your mind <laughs> that uh, this thing, Skeletal Giant, it's much more substantial than most skeletons. It's immune to death effects, disease, mental damage, paralysis, poison, and it can't be knocked unconscious. It is also resistant, uh, of, has a resistance of five against cold, electricity, fire, piercing, and slashing. Um, and has no weaknesses that you're aware of. Um, yeah, uh... I yell all this out. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then I try to attack it. All right. That is going to be a 24. 24 does in fact hit. Go ahead and roll the damage. So six plus the five slashing resistance damage. So six. Was, yeah, six. I rolled six and then the five. So that brings slashing. it down to one. All 
Alright, one point of slashing damage. And you have one action remaining. Is the femur connected? Yes, the whole thing is fully assembled now. Okay. She wanted the femur back, but I guess I'll wait <laughs> until it's dead. <laughs> Just try to attack it here. All right. Why not? That is going to be a 16. 16, unfortunately, just barely misses. All right. Then that brings us to the skeletal giant, uh, which is going to let out a horrible roar. Uh, as it just makes a whoof, sweeping swipe with its glaive at Nyx and Karak. Uh, Nyx, that is a... That is a 31 to hit. Oh yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Okay, and I believe that is a crit. It's gonna be 10 over, right? That's yes. Alright, and against... Oh, uh, not Oberyn. Karak. Against Karak, that is a dirty 20. Oh, yeah, that hits. Okay. Um, but it does not crit. No, so, thank God. Uh, against Nyx, we'll go with Nyx first. Uh, as the glaive has the deadly trait, it has an additional, an additional die of damage that I need to find. There it is. All right, so Nyx, you take... Uh, hold on. Math. Um, you take thirty-eight points of slashing damage. Holy <laughs> shit! I am out because that's more than I have total. All right, Nyx is immediately out cold. It clearly did not like you grabbing its femur. Um. <laughs> And then against Karak, that is um, 12 points of slashing. Oh, I'm out. Yeah, I'm, I'm alive. Ugh. Barely. Barely. <laughs> um, all right, then. It now has one action remaining, um, which it is going to use to just swing around its glaive one more time at Petra. Um, that against Petra is a six to hit. It won't hit. All right then. Petra, it's your turn. So are, are both of my companions out or just the no. one? Nyx is out. Karak is extremely mortal. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm switching D20s. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. I'm gonna grab the the non-used wand of heal off okay. of my belt. All right, that is one action. You have yep. two remaining. Sure do. Um, I just gotta pull up the heal spell. Give me a sec. Okay, we're gonna... What we're gonna do is we're gonna cast two action heal on Karak. Okay, go ahead and roll 1d8 plus 8. Let's hope that this doesn't bite me in the ass. Okay, so he gets 11 points of healing. All right, Karak. 11 hit points to you. And that wand is now out of commission unless you overcharge it. And that is Petra's turn, bringing us around to the top of round three with Karak. All right, you bastard. I'm doing it again. Okay. Same deal I'm back as last in the time. fucking building. 
That was a nat one on its fortitude save against your Disrupt Undead, because I'm assuming that's what you were doing first? Yes. All right. So in that case, it takes double damage and is also enfeebled one for one round. That's 24 points of damage. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Woo -hoo. Right down to mortal. Whoa. You have one action remaining. Beak. Sixteen to hit with my beak. That unfortunately just barely misses. Squawk. All right. That brings us now to Nyx. You are unconscious. I need you to make a DC eleven flat check. It's twelve because I was wounded, wasn't it? That is a good point. You so yes, DC twelve. <laughs> okay. I, I just look at the whole icon. I was like, e. <laughs> and I fail with the ten. Oh, your dying value increases by one. Nyx is on death's door. That brings us knock, to knock, knock. the uh, the giant, the skeletal giant, the extremely mortal and also enfeebled skeletal giant, which is going to <laughs> shriek out in rage as it charges, attempts to charge patch right into the wall with its horns. Um... That, Petra, is a 15 to hit against you. It won't hit. All right. You dodge. Whew, you duck down and the, the horns just <laughs> on either side of your head as they make a crack in the wall. It pulls back and <laughs> attempts to make a, uh, a swing at you with its glaive. Uh, that is going to be a 19 to hit. That also does not hit. All right. And is going to use that momentum to swing around one more time in the direction of Karak. Oh, Karak, that is a 13 to hit. Uh, that does not hit. All right, then. That brings us to Petra. Okay. Um... You said that this is a, a blood eater or a mortal gem? Mortal. Mortal. Um, okay. Then in that case, we're gonna cast Disrupt Undead on the fucker. Alright then. That is another natural one on its save. Wow. Double damage. Wonderful. Excellent news. Um. Alright, so then it's 20 points. 20 points of damage. How do you want to do this? Um, I would like to hack off its head. All right. You send out your disrupt undead webbing. Just lash it right around the creature's head and just wrench it off with your divine energy. The head just shatters across the floor. You have defeated the skeletal giant and it just melts back into bones. Wonderful. Now that we're out of initiative, I would like to cast Stabilize on my buddy Nyx. Okay. Um, you do just that. Uh, yeah, you do just that. But uh, I am going to need Nyx to make one more okay. check here. There we go. Okay, 17. 17? All right. Nyx, you are successfully stabilized by Petra's spell. You wake up. You are no longer dying, but you are now wounded too. Uh, and unconscious. Um... Yeah, uh, you all get from that 40 XP. Ooh. You said it's 40 XP? 4 0, yes. Nice. Um, and amongst the bones. That makes my XP total 666. Six, six. <laughs> Who's the devil now? Um, on the. Amongst the bones. Uh, you find the glaive, uh, as well as a suit of damaged half plate.
both appear mundane. Rock, how you doing? Squawk. I'm alive. Speaking of Could alive, worse. Is, is anyone going to attempt to, you know, give Nick some hit points? I am anyone all who feeling. anyone who perhaps has the medicine skill trained. I know, I know. <laughs> I just I get worried because if I fail, then it hurts her. And that's Only if bad, you critically Cameron. fail. It's okay. Only if you it's critically okay. fail. I don't have good luck. It's one of the key traits <laughs> of my existence. I won't hold it against you. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and heal her. Okay, go ahead and make a medicine check. Fourteen. Fourteen. You unfortunately are not successful, but you do not deal any damage. Can I try and battle medicine? Sure. Sixteen. Sixteen. That is a success. Go ahead and roll two d eight. Excellent news. <laughs> you get ten points of health. Ooh. Thank you. There we go. Nix, you're all. You're patched up a little bit, at least. <laughs> but you're certainly in pain. And there is an unopened door right here. And there's the way that you came. I grabbed that femur. Okay, yes. you grab the large femur. Karak, how are you doing? Do you need healing? I would appreciate some. We can uh, give it a go. All right, go ahead and uh, treat wounds. Oh, that's a natural 20. Hey, look at that. That's a critical success. Uh, which I do believe means 4d8. Uh, critical success, 4d8 hit points, and the wounded condition is removed. Also, Nyx, you're no longer wounded because you got successfully uh, treat wounds. Both of them disappear or uh, just one? Yes, both disappear. Okay, Karak gets 13 points of healing. All right. Karak, you are healed by 13 points, and you are no longer wounded. Oh. Thank you. And I can battle medicine myself, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's let's do that. Well, you treat woundsing or battle medicine yourself? Uh, I there guess I'll treat wounds. Okay. I know there's a difference. <laughs> 17. 17, that is a success. 2d8. Wonderful news. I regained four hit points. All right. All right. Is there anything Nyx or Karak would have liked to have been doing during all of the healing? Frank. No. All right. Karak, go ahead and make a religion check. Oh, I wasn't expecting anything to uh, come out of that. More of a prayer in the sense of like, please, God, don't fucking let, don't let me die here. <laughs> don't let me die where Oberyn died. <laughs> Technically, he died about a hallway or two that way. So, oh my God! So, um, first of all, that's a nat twenty, oh but with my, my modifier, God. that's a thirty-one. Okay, all right, son. All right, all right. <laughs> Um, you can feel as you're getting your wounds patched up that Callistria, while still warning you to be wary of the lengths you'll go for this vengeance, is quite impressed with you so far. Um, yeah. 
Thank she, you, my she, mistress. She, she, she is she is quite impressed with you so far. Um, yeah, that's that. All right. What now? Do we keep going, or do we try and bail out for the day? I'm okay with keep going. Karak? Yeah, yeah, let's call it. Alright. Let's Dude. head back. Alright. Alright, then. Are you going back to the staircase where you just where you came down this most recent time? I suppose so. All right. You do that, and I'm assuming you're heading back to Otari. Yes. All right. You make the journey to Otari. Uh, you come back to town. It's around... 11.30 in the afternoon, or in the morning, not in the afternoon. 11.30 in the morning right now as you re-enter town. Um, where are y'all going? I'm going to go to Rin, see if I can identify some of these potions. Okay. Um, yeah, Petra, you head on down to Rin's. Is anyone else going to Rin's or just Petra? I'm I'll also follow. going to Rin's. Uh, okay. Specifically for healing. All right. So, you enter, and Rin is, you know, doing her thing. Oh, hello. Nix, you are back. Good. I was worried when I did not see you, well, the past two days, that you were possibly gone for good. No, I'm still here. Glad, very glad. What can I do for you all? Besides, obviously, closing your wounds. I've got some stuff to sell and identify, if that's all right. All right. Uh, let me grant you healing first. I feel like uh, priorities. Also, I don't want to have to mop the floor again. I and... feel like that's a bygone conclusion any time we come in. Yes, it really is. All right, that is 18 points of healing to each Ooh. of you. Oh, right. 18 for all of us? Yes, each of you gets 18. Oh. We split you, 18 points among the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> we fist so fight mine. for who gets all of them. <laughs> what can I identify for you? Well, let's see. I've got... I'm going to set the extra plus one rapier, rapier that I found on all the right. thing. The... Two unusual liquids. The gold tooth and the silver ring. She takes a look at them all. Well, the ring and the tooth do not appear magical. Um, and I can't say I would have... Well, no, I feel like I could find use for both of these if you're looking to sell. Sure. All right, I'll give you five gold for the ring and four for the tooth. Sounds good. Right. Uh, as for the... As for these vials here... Hmm. This one... This one... appears to be... A skeptic's elixir. Um, it will allow you to um, more easily uh, notice falsehoods, be it spoken lies or written lies. Um, and it will also um, improve your willpower. AKA, it will give you a bonus to your will dees or to your will saves. <laughs> Good to know. As for the other potion, this appears to be a dark vision elixir. Um, which, fairly simple, it 
grants you dark vision for ten minutes. Good to know. Um, and how much would you give me for the rapier? Um, I would say 35 gold. Unless, do one of you need a charmed weapon? Uh, what, uh, remind, what, 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 what is, what is the weapon? It's a it's plus a one. It's a plus one rapier. Ah, uh, no. You can no, transfer I, the rune. I got my whippy. You, you could transfer the rune if you'd like. Oh, what's the rune? Potency. Weapon potency plus one. Give you a uh, plus one to your attack rolls. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. I'll Alrighty. pass it over. Um, you'll want to bring that over to Morlebint at Odd Stories. Morlebint? Work on that for you, yes. Wonderful, thank you. Mm, of course. Uh, was there anything else I could do for you? No, but I think that we should bury over and... Probably not a terrible idea. Question is where? Um... Well... Uh... I don't know. I suppose you could always see about the graveyard if it's opened back up. Uh, you could also attempt... You could also ask the druids of the druid circle to see if they want to just put him in the ground there, try to plant a tree with him or something. Won't that make it hard to get him back out whenever he comes back to life? Uh, possibly, yes. I don't think he'd want to be walking around with a tree growing out of his gut. True. I think it'd be quite funny to see that, actually. <laughs> I guess we go to the library and ask about... burial. Ooh. I should probably sit this one out. Well, actually, you know what? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's go. <laughs> Are we bringing his body with us? It is up to you. I don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> carry him if we want to bring him now. I just need to know. Is it awkward to carry a body through tail? I think that's a cam question. Is it awkward to carry a body through town? You really need me to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's do dead. it. <laughs> You're still carrying a partially eaten corpse through the town. He's not eaten. He's just crushed. Par I said partially eaten. No, eaten. Not crushed. He was eaten. There were mouths on the inside. He is covered oh, in bite marks. Mouths. Oh, I start stitching up his bite marks. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least perhaps it can almost be an open casket. I, I don't think that's true. Can we... I, how do we transport him without him being seen? Well, I mean, you could always go to the place first and then see if they would be willing to help with the transfer. Yeah. You could also Assuming. always go to the mayor or something. I don't know. I'm not used to burying people. Elves live a very long time. Yeah. 
All right, let's let's go to the library. All right. Um, while everyone else is going to the library, Karak, would you be going to Odd Stories to see about getting that rune transferred? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not All exactly right. welcome at the library. <laughs> All right. So Karak, you head on over. Um, I don't remember if Karak has met Morlevit before. I think you uh, did. He has not. Oh, how, is that, how I don't remember. Um, oh, you did because you all went over to see if he had any scrolls that could. That's um, right. Yes. Revive Oberyn, um, and he put some scroll to the side for you. I can't remember which one, off the top of my head right now. But um, yeah, he he said that he'd be willing to transfer the room for you for seven gold, if you want it done by tomorrow. Yeah, I can do that. Seven gold. Uh, all right, sounds good. I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow then. All right, see you tomorrow. And am, am I leaving my whip with him? Yes. All right. Uh, then I'm gonna add on, and uh, this is a very holy weapon, so so take good care of it. Okay. I, I'll I'll um. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> all right. And then uh, the, the, the second he looks away uh, and then looks back, Karak's going to be gone. Oh, that was just straight up bizarre. All right. Uh, so that gives the rest of the crew a good 10 minute head start on getting to the library, unless Karak's going somewhere else entirely. Um, so uh, Nix and Petra, you make your way on down towards the library and are met by one of the acolytes. Um, who at this point has just instinctually started taking you to Vandy because, you know, they all kind of know that when you're here, you're going to ask for something that they can't easily provide. Um, <laughs> so they bring you to Vandy. Um, yes, what can I do for you today? Are you performing burials yet? Um... In the graveyard, well, we're technically capable of doing that. Um, technically, but it's it's a bit of a mess up there. We're uh, still trying to figure out how we're going to uh, get the remains of that Scalathrax out um, without simply dumping it over the cliff. I understand. We just can't... We can't leave Oberyn unburied much longer. Which is fair. Um, well, we could always try that uh, I, in the in the graveyard, or um, we could always... We can organize some other sort of burial if you don't want him in the ground. Um, we could always... There's a little bit of land right outside the library. We can try burying him there. Since he, he was involved in um, stopping those undead, um, we would consider it not improper if he was buried there. What do you think, Nix? Is there easy access to get him back out whenever the time's right? Um, Sure. Everything that can keep them like fresh while we work on that. Um, only the, only the, um, the stasis room. Oh, but, what's um, that? That, that? That's expensive. Oh, how expensive? Um, when I last talked to your friend about it, she was not too keen on it. That's how expensive. Um, what, you think I don't got money because I'm a goblin? No, I oh just... Uh, it's it's more money than most people make in a month per week. How much do you make in a month? Oh, I don't make much of anything. The clerical life is not one of luxury. Do you 
a deal for a hero of Atari? You're killing me. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. He, he, <laughs> here's what I'll I'll say. Um, okay. One moment. I need to do some math. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nix is trying to keep it fresh. You're back for one session. Scary. You're back for one session. <laughs> oh. And you're making him do math. How could you? Oh, it's okay. Um. So that would be around. Uh. Approximately. It costs approximately seven gold pieces per week of upkeep. Oh. Okay. We should be done with this in a week, yeah? Uh. That's optimistic. <laughs> Two weeks? I... I really don't know what the bird has planned. Right. The bird. Let's put him in the stasis room. Hold on, I hold on, the bird. Gold. What do you mean, the bird? <laughs> I don't know. There's a bird bloke who's come to town and he's invested in this, apparently. Does he have a turban? I, I suppose you could call his hat that, yeah. <laughs> he's a friend of yours. <laughs> I'm not really a not say friend. Really, now? Then why does he have input on this? Because he's the one who thinks he's doing the resurrecting. Make a diplomacy check. <laughs> oh, this went so much better than <laughs> I thought it would. <laughs> Alright, that's a 22. Okay, so let me get this straight. That good for nothing book thief is attempting to. He, he wants to resurrect your dead friend. However, He's a book he thief? attempted book thief. I'll give him that. Attempted. He, he, he wasn't successful. However, he, the point is. He, he's attempting to resurrect your friend, but he is not a friend of yours. So This is all very confusing. I'll rent right, you the, here, the room. Let me, let me break it down. You remember Oberon? I. I. Uh, he had his troubles with the law in his past. Okay. Uh, the bird gentleman would like to take a vengeance upon him for reasons that I'm actually not entirely clear on. And to do so, he hopes to resurrect him in order to exact his vengeance. This We're is not all... particularly fond of the bird man because we don't really want Oberyn to be, you know, tortured and all that, but his soul is currently trapped over in gauntlet, so if we can get his soul free, that's good news for us. Then we're crossing the whole bridge with the bird man wanting to exact revenge or whatever. This is very convoluted. Okay. Um, I'm willing You're to, telling me. I'm willing to rent you the room, but the bard is not allowed anywhere near this place. Okay. Perfectly acceptable. Great. And um, you can tell him that if he does try to show his beaked face around here again, oh, he's getting that serenary wallop. And she pats her. She pats her muscles. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I um, had one other question for you. Yes. That sorceress who lived in Gauntlet. Right. Do you have a picture of her anywhere? Um, 
Not it. I don't think I would have had one of those in any of the books around here that we'd still have. God's forsaken sister stole all the ones with the pictures. Um, Alright, well, yeah. if you find anything, let me know. I will say, if... You could always try going over to Menheim's Manor. Um, they've turned the West Wing, uh, or no, sorry, the East Wing, uh, into a public museum of Otari's history. They might have something there, but no guarantees. Thank you. I. Uh, how should we go about transporting the body? Where is it, Rens? Yes. Um, unless you want to be there, we can just show up. Nix? That's fine. Thank you. I hand over the seven gold. Well, thank you kindly. All right. We'll, uh, we'll go get that. Uh, I'm going to go over to the museum. Um, okay. So, uh, next I'm assuming you're going with? Sure, I follow along. Alright. Um. Okay. So, uh, Karak, I would say at this point you run into your crew. Well, where, where would you have gone? I forget where you said you were going next. Um... I was probably just going to head down to the library, to be honest. Okay. Try to meet up with them. I would say you would meet them around halfway. Um, ah, hello. How was the burial? They're going to put him in stasis. And you're not allowed in the library. Yeah, Damn. that makes sense. <laughs> what book did you what try to steal? What were you trying to steal? Look, I found a sectioned off part of the library and I thought it could, could be useful for us. So I, uh, I helped myself and they did not like that. They are not, for a library, they are not very big uh, supporters of free information. Mm-hmm. We're going to the museum, so... All right, let's go. All right. So, you make your ways over to Menhem's Manor, um, aka the mayor's house, uh, and the door. Uh, the front door is not open, but there is a sort of sign that just says "Museum this way." Leads you around to the side. There's a little side door, and you head on in. Um, and inside you see that this place has indeed been turned into a museum of the town's history um, you see uh, replicas of the equipment belonging to the Rose Guard, the heroes that founded the town um, portraits of each of them you see a uh, a little replica of Gauntlight um, and um, as you sort of go through you do, you see the names Belcora, Haravex quite a few uh, and the name Volok as well, you see the name Volok um, you do not see any portraits of either. Darn. Well, anyone else got ideas for the day? Is it too late for breakfast, chicken? (laughs) 
maybe we could check out the docks. See uh, how they're holding up. I don't suspect they'll want us there, but we can try. Alright, so you uh, head on down to you head on down to the docks um, and uh, they're still trying to figure out how to they're they're clearing the uh, remains of the ships away um, so a few of the a few of the little areas are closed off um, which is definitely causing a little trouble for ship traffic but uh, you know could be worse Is there anything specific you wanted to look here? Uh, no, just to, you know, see how they're doing. It's the only idea I've got. I just oh. wish we could find out for sure if that lady that Strong sees at night is the sorceress. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's check that out. <laughs> well, how would you like to do that, as I haven't been able to find any photos of her? Hmm. That is a good question. Uh, so, I'm sorry, did Skrung say they were seeing her at night? Yes. Yeah, Skrung was saying that he's been seeing this woman who comes to him at night. We know that there was a powerful sorceress there who was a necromancer. It feels like a logical leap, but I like to prove things. No, no, that so, makes sense. I was hoping that perhaps there would be a picture of her somewhere, but uh, apparently not. Uh, I mean... We could probably stake out uh, the place at night. You know, see if we can see this mysterious visitor for ourselves. Actually, actually, here's another question. Uh, who's the oldest person in town? Oldest person in town. Make a society check. real question is, is that information that's in the module? <laughs> Four. Four? Oh. Um, you've definitely seen a couple old-looking folks around, but you've never been t particularly good at telling humans' age. And elves, that's... Oof, don't even Don't even get started on elves. I like to imagine that Karak is just going to start wandering around town going, Elderly? Do we have <laughs> any elderly? <laughs> Where Hello, are, are the you, olds? Are you an old, perhaps, by chance? Uh, uh, excuse me, how old are you? Uh, 56? Do you know the woman? What? Ah, <laughs> uh, they don't. Okay, do you know the woman? <laughs> Squawk! You might as well be asking if they know me, because I'm standing there. Or Nick. Do you know the, do you know this woman? Uh that one right there? Sure. Yeah, that's Petra Palmer, the toy maker. Oh, you make toys? That's cool. Not especially helpful in our current situation. Alright, you can go now. Okay, bye! What do you mean I can go? What? No, go hey, the, the person. The person. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were talking to me. I was like, what the fuck? No, no, your, your, your toys are much appreciated. <laughs> that sounded insincere, that's just my voice. <laughs> so you're just insincere. Good to know. <laughs> So 
So what are y'all doing? I mean, we could... Is everybody fully healed up? I'm very close. Fully? No. Healed? Somewhat. Yeah, I'm very close. Yeah, you're all pretty... All pretty close. Alright, do we take... Try and get you to full health, and then go stake out and see if we can see this witch woman thing. Does anyone else have a better idea? Uh, that's all I got. I don't have anything. Okay. So... So you're going to, you're planning on going for a stakeout. I don't necessarily know if stakeout is... I think she can sense when we're there, so I don't think that that's... I don't know. Sorry, I'm trying to think here. Well, let's go to the Crooksnook. They know about shady shit, right? Sure. <laughs> Petra's heading to the Crooksnook. Petra arrives at the Crooksnook. Are others going with Petra or just Petra? I follow along because I don't have anything else to do. All right. Karak? All right. Karak also follows along. Um, sorry. Sorry, I tripped. <laughs> it's okay. Um, all right. You enter the, uh, the Crook's Nook, and there's still quite a few uh, displaced sailors here. But... Yin beckons you over to the bar. How how go things, my friends? Oh, quite well. I was not talking to you. How go things, Petra? Things have gotten complicated. Do, tell, do you know do anyone tell. who knows anything about the uh, the necromancer who used to live in Gauntlet? Tried the library. Do you know half their books were stolen by the librarian's sister some years back? I actually did know about that. Um, Apparently, the... every book that has any relevancy to anything that we ask, stolen by her sister. I do remember that. It was very strange. The book's specific, the, like that specific subject matter, was targeted. Um. I had a few of my people go out and try to find it, but uh, no dice. Um, hmm. Did you try the museum? That I did. I'm assuming no luck there either. Everything's vague. <sighs> A name, the fact she's a necromancer, but beyond that, if we had an image, we could test a hypothesis, but... Hmm. Well, you could... Have you tried going to odd stories? I know they mostly don't... They mostly do fiction, but uh, Morlebin's husband is a lovely, lovely man who prides himself on his non non-fiction collection. Oh, yeah, uh, should... I was just there. We should ask him. Okay, good, I good idea. They have a lot of textbooks and such. Um, not sure if they will have quite what you need, but you never know. Worth a shot. Anything else I can do for you while you are here? 
Anyone got anything? Nope. I'm all set. All right. Thank you for the help. Of course, my friend. Nix, it is good to see you back store. in town. All right. So, you make your way up to Odd Stories. Uh, and upon entry, Moribint says, Oh, I I'm still working on that whip. It's not quite tomorrow yet. We're actually not here about that. Uh, oh, wh what can I do for you then? We hear you might have a non-fiction collection we can look at. Yeah, we, we do. Um, if you go on up to the second floor of the tower, uh, Carl, 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 there we go, sorry. We've been married like 20 something years and it's very difficult to tell, isn't it? To say his name out loud sometimes with this accent. Um, he should be up there and able to help you. Thank you, sir. All right, let's go up and see Carl. All right. I also want the record to show I did not pull that out of my ass. That is in the module. His um, name is actually Carl. Yeah, C A R L T H E. Ooh. His name is rough. actually Carl. <laughs> His parents um, must have hated him. <laughs> um, it seemed too oddly specific for you to have come up with. It. <laughs> Like, um, if you had just come up with it, it would have been his husband, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you head on upstairs, and you see a, a, a human man. Um, same general age as Morlevin, mid to late 60s. Um, oh, hello. How can I help you today? Hello, I... Uh... We heard you had a non-fiction collection. Yes, we do. It's, well, unfortunately, Marley won't let me expand it too much more, but uh, we definitely have some here. And he brings you, you over to... you happen to have... Like a, a bunch of... Just a whole rack of shelves. Like a whole wall, I should say, of just labeled non-fiction with a really dusty sign. <laughs> Do you what have you anything for? about the necromancer who lived in Gauntlet? Mm, let me think, let me think. Uh, what was her name? It was a Belcora, right? Belmora? Is that it? Bel uh, Belcora. I think it was Belcora. With a C. Uh, I've, you know, you're not the first ones to be asking about books like that around here. Um... Who else has been asking? Uh, some weirdo in a cloak came by a few weeks back. Um, weirdo in a cloak? Yeah, weirdo in a cloak. Um, a dark elf weirdo in a cloak? No. <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. Definitely not dark elf. Uh, looked human uh, to me. Um, do you look like a rich boy? Um... No, I didn't really get too particularly good of a look. It didn't look particularly poor, judging by all that purple she was wearing. Um, I ended up selling her one of my one of my textbooks, but uh, I think I should have one or two more around here about about uh, old old Absalom families and all that. And he uh, pulls out a couple of books, sifts through them real quick, and then finally finds one. He's like, "Oh yeah, I think this is. I think this is the one you're looking for." And he hands you a, a book, open to a page with a sketched out portrait. Uh, a sketched out version of hold on a second sketched out version of this
this woman. Yes, this woman with long hair, a lot of jewelry, um, with a big old uh, frilled collar. I think that's the right word to use, frilled. No, uh, I don't know. Whatever the whatever the thing is that a dinosaur has, like the triceratops. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like she's got a, a big old lizard frill uh, for a collar. Wait, so is this the woman he saw, or is this the necromancer? As far as I'm aware, that is a photo of Belcora, the the lady, the the lady who built Gauntlet. Does she look familiar? Nix, go ahead and make a personal history check. That's an 11. 11? Hmm. You think so. You think she does look familiar. You're struggling to place exactly from where. She looks kind of familiar. You should take this to Scrung and see if he knows anything about it. So you, you wish to purchase the book? How much for it? Uh, one moment. So I'm just <laughs> going to say it's three silver. Wonderful. We will purchase the book for three silver. Excellent. You now have a book of... Book of Absalom nobility through the years. What does that even go under? Items? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's a general itemized uh, equipment. items tab. That's the oh, generalized I guess that's item what tab. It said it's a book of Absalom nobility. Yeah. Is there anything else that anyone would like to do? I'm all set. Okay. All right. Then. Good to hear. So I'm assuming that your next plan is to go back to Gauntlet. Yes. All right. Are you planning on going back so tonight or tonight or tomorrow? We should go back tonight, right? To stake out. she knows when we come. I don't think she'll show herself unless she wants to be seen. We can go tonight if you want, or we can wait until tomorrow. Yeah, we should wait. Alright. So in that case, that is where we're going to end tonight's session. Nyx, how are you feeling? Uh, she's feeling okay. She's glad that Oberon's body is going to stay fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively and... fresh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. And uh, Karak, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I almost died, but you know what? Um... My homie Paul came in clutch. He did, that good old Paul. I, I, I gotta keep summoning that guy. Like, I thought the <laughs> hand was gonna be, like, my signature guy. I think it's gotta be Paul now. Paul's pretty great, not gonna lie. I like Paul. You can have a full <laughs> cast of characters. <laughs> That's true. true. But I can only have one at a time. No, technically you could have up to, uh, you can cast, you can prepare the spell in as many spell slots as you want. So you have, you can have a maximum of three because that you need to sustain each one. Oh, shit. Um, all right, Petra, how are you feeling? I feel like... We're so close to just having something click 
it's not quite there and it's driving me a little crazy. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And uh, how are we all feeling as players? I'm feeling pretty good. I, For a hot sec, I thought I was going to get murdered. <laughs> I was pretty close to being dead too. <laughs> Yeah. I, I did also think that Colby's character was going to die again. <laughs> yeah, that is that is something that I've noticed about, about just Pathfinder in general, is that the enemies are always very hard-hitting. Like, yeah. even when oh, like you're you over-leveled up. for them. Because that is another thing I've noticed, is that it feels like they're actively keeping you underpowered for this adventure, which is I'm happy that I basically put you a level above where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Because it like, means that you're we, correct. <laughs> I, I can't believe that we're a level above. Cause like this feels like, you know, just difficult enough for us. Yeah. yeah I like it, it makes things exciting. Yeah. It's, it's much better this way. Um, yeah. Oh my God. But like, even then, Could you imagine how many of us would have died if we were at the correct oh level. God. Yeah. No, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Everyone, there, at least there twice. Would new, there would be a new cast of characters. <laughs>